Gretchen, can you come up here for a second? Here again. <laughs> right. Storm water, pollution, solutions. Let's focus on the solution side. A rain garden. We could put one in. We did. There was two at this school. Your classmates did it about three years ago. It's functioning. Taking a couple of those downspouts out of the system, treating it with the right microorganisms that come around the roots of the right plants in the right soil. You can do it on a bigger scale. A whole parking lot could be a rain garden. This is Issaquah High School. Just got remodeled. In fact, completely rebuilt. Notice how subtle this parking lot. It's raining, but the rain is not puddling in the core, in the center of the parking lot. The rain is rolling off. So they must have graded it that way on purpose. Very carefully, so it just rolls off to the side in to the rain gardens. If you go up to the third floor and look out through the rain, you can see the entire parking lot's built that way. It's working like a forest. Even though it's a parking lot, it's behaving like a forest. And then I realized, wow, I'm on the third story of a high school. That's really unusual. Great solution for stormwater. They made their building footprint much smaller by doing three stories instead of one story spread out and taking up all that surface that could be infiltrating stormwater. A smaller footprint for their rooftop. Here's their inner courtyard. Everyone gets light into the classrooms, and it's a rain garden in the center. You can do it at a neighborhood scale. This is in West Seattle, a great model. It's called the High Point Neighborhood. This is the shape of that neighborhood. It's about 1,700 homes. The whole thing's a rain garden. This is a similar outline, but even bigger still. This is the whole downtown core of Issaquah. Look it up. It's called the Issaquah Downtown Plan, or the Issaquah Plan, or the Issaquah 2030 Plan. By 2030, starting now, they want to be much more sustainable. All their systems shifting over. How will they do it? You could study for your project the Issaquah Plan and develop a similar plan for your city. The future is going to look like this. In regards to stormwater, it's just a neighborhood. Houses, streets, plants, it's pretty. What's the game changer here? The curbs have cuts in them on purpose so that the water can roll off the street and right into the rain garden there to the side. And then it's treated, it's bound up, the heavy metals are bound up, and the hydrocarbons are broken down by the microorganisms in the soil close to the roots. Here's another rain garden in the neighborhood. Let's take a look at this, this concrete sidewalk here. It's a great invention, it's quite new. If you get closer to it, it looks like this. It's pervious. Water goes right through it, down into the soil where it can slow down the storm water, not rush it away. It looks like a rice cake. You don't want to eat this, you totally break your teeth. It is concrete, but water can go through it. What's in it? It's got the same pebbles, twice the cement, no sand, and fibers, little fibers that help give it strength. You could drive a fire truck on it. You could also do it with asphalt. Where the cars are driving, that's regular asphalt. It's impervious, water can't get through. But where the cars park, and in that first half hour or so, they begin to drip, then it can be handled by this pervious asphalt. Now you want to fix your car drips. You want to take it in as soon as you see it happening and get it fixed. So it's not adding to this problem, but this helps with the solution. It's right here. This is your Fred Meyer in Maple Valley. You could also do pavers. Cars can drive on the pavers. Here's a different style. You could put it in your driveway. Water can go through and soak in and slow down. Or this style, locked together. Notice that downspout coming right in and just letting the water flow down and through not to a pipe taking away and concentrating all that volume into our water bodies. You could put in a rain barrel. That would slow down the water just from one downspout. It would be beautiful. Or you could think even bigger. This is probably the greenest fire station on the planet. It's in Issaquah. They have a huge cistern. They harvest all of their rainwater from the rooftop, hold it in the cistern, and all year long they get 90% of their water needs met for their whole building from the rain. Can you do it for a school? Yes. This is Valley View Middle School in the Snohomish School District. It's brand new. Every single downspout has a cistern. There's 34 cisterns altogether. And there's a big cement vault underneath the stairs where the students walk into school each morning. Together with the cisterns and the vault, the capacity is about 100,000 gallons of water. 
more than enough to flush all the toilets all year long in the building. So instead of paying for water to be clean so you can flush your toilets with it, why not harvest the rain for free so you can flush your toilets with that water? It's brilliant. It's the future. You could write to that school or learn as much as you can from the architectural company, which was, is Dykeman up in Everett, and design a new school here in your school district around these principles. This is the biggest green roof on the planet. It's the Ford Truck Assembly Plant in Michigan. 10.4 acres. It's almost its own ecosystem. Green roofs. Downtown Seattle. Beautiful green roof. Awesome green roof. They say the next World Cup's going to be here. You never know what the defense is planning. How about your own house? And there's a rooftop. That's you. This is our campus. This is our forest nearby our campus and the pathways that we take to come to school. This is our community. We have a responsibility to be part of Puget Sound. This is our watershed. Psh! Puget Sound starts here. <laughs>